There's something unsettling about an empty school. The usually bustling hallways become long, silent tunnels. Shadows stretch too far in the dim lighting, and every creak, every gust of wind, echoes as if the building is whispering secrets. And when the doors are locked, when the students are gone, it's like the school takes on a life of its own, a dark and twisted version of what it once was. This is what I found out last year when I was caught in a school lockdown. Not a drill, not a test, but the real thing. It was late, after school hours. I was part of the student tech crew, helping to set up for an event the following day. The rest of the crew had already left, but I was behind, fixing a problem with the sound system in the auditorium. Mr. Jenkins, the janitor, was still around, some leaning up the classrooms on the second floor. Other than him, the building was empty, or at least it was supposed to be. I had just finished packing up my things when the loudspeaker crackled to life, followed by a monotone voice. Attention all students and faculty, we are going into immediate lockdown. This is not a drill, I repeat, this is not a drill. A jolt of panic shot through me. Lockdown? Now? Who was even still here? I grabbed my phone to check for any messages or alerts, but there was nothing. I ran to the door of the auditorium and peered into the hallway. No one in sight. The overhead lights flickered faintly, casting long, eerie shadows across the floor. I thought about staying put, locking myself inside the auditorium like we were taught during drills, but something felt off. My gut told me I needed to find someone, anyone, maybe Mr. Jenkins. I stepped into the hallway, my sneakers squeaking against the linoleum. I walked towards the stairwell, thinking I'd find him cleaning the second floor classrooms, but as I climbed the steps, a strange sensation washed over me. The temperature dropped significantly, so cold I could see my breath fogging in the air. The lights above me flickered again, this time more violently. I stopped, halfway up the stairs, staring at the overhead lights as they buzzed and blinked. That's when I heard it, the faint sound of footsteps behind me. I turned quickly, but no one was there. Just the dim, empty hallway stretching behind me, silent and still. I shook it off and continued up the stairs, my heart pounding faster with each step. As I reached the second floor, the feeling of being watched became unbearable. It wasn't like the usual uneasiness of being alone. This felt sinister, like there were eyes on me from every corner of the hallway. Mr. Jenkins? I called out, my voice barely above a whisper. My words echoed back at me, but there was no reply. I started walking toward the classroom he was supposed to be cleaning, but with each step, the silence grew heavier. The lockers lining the walls seemed to loom over me, and I could swear I heard faint whispers coming from them, like voices trapped inside, trying to escape. My fingers were ice cold by now, and the feeling in my gut had twisted into something far worse, an almost primal fear. I was halfway down the hall when I saw it, a shadow at the far end near the last classroom. It looked human at first, tall and standing unnaturally still. But as I squinted, trying to make out the figure, it moved in a way no person could, its limbs jerking unnaturally as if it was struggling to maintain its shape. I froze. My legs refused to move, locked in place by sheer terror. I tried to call out again, but my throat had gone dry. The shadow seemed to notice me then. Slowly, its head, or what I assumed was its head, tilted to the side like it was curious. And then it began to move toward me. I bolted. I sprinted down the hallway, not caring about being quiet anymore, the sound of my footsteps echoing in the empty school. I didn't dare look back, but I could feel it gaining on me, the air growing colder with every second. My breath came in sharp, ragged gasps as I reached the stairwell and threw myself down the steps two at a time. As I hit the bottom, I heard it again, the voice on the loudspeaker. Lockdown is now over. Students and faculty may exit the building. But the voice wasn't coming from the speakers anymore. It was all around me, echoing through the halls, distorting, warping, like it was being played on a loop. I looked around wildly, trying to figure out where to go. The front doors. I had to get to the front doors. I raced toward the main entrance, heart thundering in my chest. The doors were just ahead, but as I reached for the handle, something grabbed me. Cold, bony fingers wrapped around my wrist, pulling me back. I screamed, spinning around to see who or what had grabbed me, but there was nothing there. My wrist was ice cold, the skin pale where the invisible hand had touched me. Suddenly, the overhead lights flickered again, and I heard a voice, clear as day. You shouldn't have stayed behind. I ran. 
I didn't care anymore about anything but getting out. I burst through the front doors, nearly tripping over the threshold, and kept running until I reached the street. I turned back once, just once, and through the glass doors of the school, I saw it. The shadow, standing at the entrance, watching me, its head still tilted in that unnatural way. The next day, I found out that there was never a lockdown. No alarms had been triggered, and the loudspeakers had never been used. Mr. Jenkins never saw Enx anything strange either, but he said something to me that chilled me to the bone. Strange, he said. A kid died here years ago during a real lockdown. He stayed behind in the auditorium. No one found him until the next day. I haven't stayed after hours since. Story number two. It all started with a rumor. Passed between whispers and nervous giggles at Oak Hollow High. The students loved to tell the tale of the Midnight Bell, a, a ghost story that had been circulating for years. Uh, supposedly, decades ago, a janitor named Mr. Warden had gone mad during a lockdown drill. They say he believed there was a real intruder, and that, in his panic, he locked himself in the basement boiler room. No one knew what exactly happened after that, but Mr. Warden was never seen again. The only trace left of him was the old bell in the basement that would ring at exactly midnight on nights when the school was locked down. No one really believed it, of course. Well, no one except for Kayla. She was the quiet type, the one who always sat in the back of the classroom, rarely making eye contact with anyone. Kayla had heard the stories, but something about the midnight bell fascinated her. Unlike the others who laughed it off, she spent hours researching Mr. Warden's disappearance, poring through old newspapers and school records. But it wasn't just curiosity. Kayla had her own reasons for believing in the supernatural, things she never talked about, even to her closest friends. That's why when the school principal announced a lockdown drill late one October afternoon, Kayla's heart started pounding. The announcement came over the loudspeaker just as the final bell rang. This is a lockdown drill. Please remain in your classrooms. The doors to the building were sealed, and the eerie quiet that followed left an unsettling feeling in the air. Kayla knew this was her chance. The drill wasn't supposed to last long, but if she was quick, she could sneak down to the basement before anyone noticed. She needed to see if the stories were true, if the midnight bell would ring. Without hesitation, she slipped out of the classroom while the teacher wasn't looking, moving quickly through the empty hallways. The lights flickered overhead, casting long, twisted shadows against the walls. The basement was strictly off limits, but Kayla had already memorized the route from her research. She made her way to the stairwell at the end of the main corridor, her footsteps echoing in the silence. The air grew colder as she descended the stairs, and with each step her unease grew. The hallway at the bottom was dimly lit, and the smell of damp concrete filled her nose. Finally, she reached the door marked Boiler Room. Her hands trembled as she pushed it open. The room was dark except for the faint glow from the boiler's pilot light. She stepped inside, her eyes scanning the room for the bell. There it was, rusted and covered in dust, hanging from the ceiling in the far corner, just as the rumors said. Kayla's heart raced. She glanced at her phone. It was 11.57 p.m. Suddenly, the, the door slammed shut behind her. She spun around, her breath catching in her throat. Hello, she called out, but her voice sounded small and weak in the heavy darkness. She reached for the door handle, but it wouldn't budge. Locked. Panic rose in her chest. Then she heard it, a faint scraping sound from behind her. Kayla turned slowly, her eyes wide. At first she saw nothing, but then something moved in the shadows near the boiler. A figure, a man, hunched over and gaunt, his eyes wide and vacant, emerged from the darkness. His clothes were old and torn, stained with something dark. It was Mr. Warden, or what was left of him. Kayla froze in place, her mind racing. She had expected something, maybe a noise or an old bell ringing, but not this. The figure moved slowly toward her, dragging one foot behind him, his breath rattling in the still air. His eyes were fixed on her, unblinking, as if he could see right through her. The clock on her phone read 11.59 p.m. Desperately, she backed away, her hands groping for anything to defend herself with. Her fingers brushed against an old wrench, and she grabbed it, holding it out in front of her. Stay back! she shouted, her voice cracking. But Mr. Warden didn't stop. He reached out with one skeletal hand, his fingers curling toward her. Kayla swung the wrench, but it passed through him like smoke. 
A cold chill washed over her as she realized what she was dealing with wasn't flesh and blood. She stumbled backward, her body pressing against the far wall. Then the clock struck midnight. The bell rang, its deep mournful toll echoing through the room. It was louder than she had expected, and with each ring, Mr. Warden seemed to grow stronger, more solid. His face twisted into a grotesque grin, and he lunged at her. Kayla screamed, dropping the wrench as she scrambled toward the door. Her fingers fumbled with the lock, but it wouldn't turn. The bell rang again, and she felt the air grow colder. Mr. Warden was almost upon her. In a final, desperate act, she slammed her body against the door, and to her surprise, it flew open. She tumbled into the hallway, her legs shaking beneath her. Without looking back, she sprinted up the stairs, her heart pounding in her ears. She didn't stop running until she burst through the main doors of the school, gasping for air. The lockdown drill had ended and the other students were filing out of the building, laughing and chatting as if nothing had happened. But Kayla knew the truth. She had seen him, Mr. Warden, the Midnight Bell, and the horror that lived in the basement of Oak Hollow High. She never spoke of it again. But every time there was another lockdown drill, she couldn't help but wonder if someone else would hear the bell and if they would make it out alive. Story number three. It was a chilly autumn afternoon when a sudden announcement crackled through the PA system. This is a lockdown drill, the voice echoed. Teachers, please lock your doors. Students, remain quiet. Riley was in the middle of a history lesson, lazily drawing on the corner of her notebook, when her teacher, Mrs. McKenna, stood up and locked the door. The blinds were drawn over the large classroom windows, casting eerie shadows across the walls. For some reason, this lockdown felt different. The tension in the air was palpable, like the whole school had held its breath. Riley glanced around the room. Her classmates were unusually quiet, as if they too sensed something wasn't quite right. Then she noticed something odd. Carter, the class clown who normally couldn't sit still, was staring at the door with wide eyes, his face drained of all color. She followed his gaze and saw nothing unusual, just the door, locked like always. Riley, Carter whispered so softly that only she could hear. Something's out there. She opened her mouth to respond, but at that moment, the lights flickered. The overhead bulbs buzzed ominously, dimming and brightening as if they were struggling to stay on. Mrs. McKenna frowned and stood near her desk, clutching the clipboard she used for drills. The announcement echoed again, but this time, the voice wasn't familiar. It was deep, raspy, and distorted. Students, stay in your classrooms. Do not leave for any reason. A cold shiver ran down Riley's spine. She glanced at Carter, who was now trembling, his hands white from gripping the edge of his desk. What's wrong with you? She whispered. You don't hear it? His eyes were glued to the door, unblinking. It's in the hallway. Mrs. McKenna's voice cut through the silence. All right, students, let's remain calm. This is just a drill. But even she didn't sound convinced. Suddenly, there was a loud bang. Something slammed against the lockers outside, the metal clanging with a force that made everyone jump in their seats. Mrs. McKenna stepped forward, her face pale as she strained to listen. Stay in your seats, she instructed, but her voice wavered. The lights flickered again, and this time they went out. Total darkness swallowed the room. Riley's heart pounded in her chest. She could hear whispers, soft but chilling, like voices trying to break through the silence. Thud, thud, thud. Heavy footsteps echoed down the hallway, slow and deliberate. It didn't sound like a person walking. It was more like something dragging itself along the floor, each step making the building tremble ever so slightly. The footsteps stopped just outside their classroom door. For a moment, Everything was still. The room was so quiet that Riley could hear her own heartbeat pounding in her ears. Then the doorknob rattled. It twisted back and forth violently, like someone or something was trying to force its way inside. Mrs. McKenna rushed to the door and put her ear against it. Her expression darkened. Who? Who's out there? She whispered, though Riley could tell she didn't expect an answer. The rattling stopped abruptly. The silence that followed was suffocating. Then came the knock. Three slow knocks on the door, each one louder than the last. Knock, knock, knock. Riley felt her stomach twist into knots. She could barely breathe. Her classmates were frozen in fear, no one daring to speak. Mrs. McKenna backed away from the door. She looked at the students, her face a mask of fear she couldn't hide any longer. 
Everyone, get under your desks, she said, her voice shaky. Now. They didn't need to be told twice. Riley crouched beneath her desk, trying to make herself as small as possible. She could feel Carter shaking next to her. What do you think it is? She whispered. I don't know, he muttered, but it's not human. The knocking started again, this time, this time faster and more frantic. The door rattled as if something were slamming against it. Then the sound stopped, replaced by a low growling noise that filled the air. Suddenly, the door creaked open. Mrs. McKenna gasped, stepping back toward the far wall, but no one entered. The door hung slightly ajar, casting a thin sliver of light from the hallway into the room. Riley held her breath, her eyes fixed on the door. There was no sound, nothing moved, but the air felt thick, like something unseen had crept inside with them. She felt an icy breeze brush against her skin and a whisper filled the air, faint but unmistakable. Get out. The word sent a chill down her spine. She could feel something watching her, something lurking just beyond the veil of shadows in the room. Her hands clenched into fists, her nails digging into her palms as she fought the urge to scream. The door suddenly slammed shut, rattling the walls. The room plunged into darkness again, and the whispers grew louder, more insistent. Get out! Get out! Get out! Mrs. McKenna fumbled for her phone, trying to call for help, but the signal was gone. She dropped it, her hands shaking uncontrollably. Stay calm, she whispered, though it was clear she was just as terrified as they were. Then, as quickly as it had started, everything stopped. The whispers, the cold air, the growling, it all vanished, leaving an eerie stillness in its wake. The lights flickered back on, but something was wrong. Half the class was missing. Desks were empty, chairs overturned. Only a few students remained, wide-eyed and terrified, as if they had just awoken from a nightmare. Riley's heart raced. Where did they go? She asked in a shaky voice, looking around the room. Carter was gone. Mrs. McKenna, pale and trembling, stared at the empty desks. We need to leave, she whispered. Now. Riley and the remaining students didn't hesitate. They bolted for the door, their footsteps echoing in the eerie silence of the empty school. But as they reached the hallway, they saw something that made their blood run cold. A line of lockers stood open, their doors swinging slowly as if something had passed through them. And at the end of the hallway, in the shadows, stood a figure, tall, dark, and barely human. Its eyes glowed faintly in the dim light. The figure took a step forward, and then the PA system crackled one last time. The distorted voice spoke again, chilling them to the bone. Lockdown over. Story number four. It started as a rumor. You know, the kind that floats around every school, a ghost story, something give the students a chill when they walk the halls late at night. But at our school, the story was about room 213. I didn't believe it at first. How could I? It was just something the upperclassmen made up to scare the freshmen. The story went that years ago, a girl named Emily had gone missing during a lockdown. They never found her, but some people claimed she still haunted room 213. The thing is, the lockdown actually happened. I looked it up. It was all over the news back then, police everywhere, a frantic search, but, but no one knew what had really happened to her. It wasn't until I got stuck in a lockdown of my own that I started to wonder if the rumors were true. It was a normal day, or so I thought. I had stayed late for detention, my first one. Just me and Mr. Hayward, the grumpy science teacher sitting in his classroom room 211, right next to 2113. It was quiet, too quiet actually. I remember staring at the clock, counting down the minutes until I could leave. Then, without warning, the intercom buzzed to life. Attention all students and staff, we are now in lockdown. This is not a drill. Please follow protocol and remain in your rooms. I glanced at Mr. Hayward. His usual gruff expression faltered for a moment, but he quickly regained his composure. Stay here, he said, heading for the door. I'm going to check if this is real. He stepped into the hall, leaving me alone in the classroom. The door clicked shut behind him. A few minutes passed. The room felt heavy, the silence suffocating. I kept expecting him to come back any second, but the longer I waited, the more uneasy I became. That's when I heard it, a faint scratching sound. At first, I thought it was the wind, but it was coming from the direction of room 2113. I stood up, my heart starting to race. I don't know why I did it, but I walked to the door and opened it just a crack, peeking out into the hallway. The lights were dim, and everything was eerily still. 
There was no sign of Mr. Hayward, but the scratching sound had gotten louder, like nails dragging across wood. It was definitely coming from room 13. I knew I shouldn't, but something about that sound drew me in. I stepped into the hall, tiptoeing toward the door of 213. As I got closer, the temperature dropped. It felt like I had walked into a freezer, my breath fogging up in the air. I stood in front of the door, my hand hovering over the knob. The scratching stopped. I leaned closer, pressing my ear against the wood, trying to hear if anyone was inside. That's when I heard the voice. A soft, almost childlike whisper. Help me. I stumbled back, my heart pounding in my chest. Every instinct told me to run, but I couldn't move. My feet were glued to the spot, my mind racing. Was this some kind of joke, or was someone really in there? The whisper came again, this time more urgent. Please, help me. Against my better judgment, I reached for the doorknob and twisted it. The door creaked open slowly, revealing the dark interior of room 213. The first thing I noticed was the smell, like mildew and something rotting. The room was empty, desks scattered haphazardly, dust coating every surface. But there in the far corner was a shape, a girl. She was sitting on the floor, her back to me, her hair long and matted. Her head was bowed, her shoulders shaking like she was crying. Are you okay? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. She didn't respond. I took a step closer, and that's when I saw it. The blood. It was smeared on the floor around her, thick and dark, like she had been sitting there for hours. My heart leapt into my throat. What happened? Are you hurt? Slowly, she lifted her head, her movements stiff, unnatural. When she turned to face me, I froze. Her eyes. They were wide and hollow, empty black voids staring right through me. Her skin was pale, almost gray, and her lips were cracked and bloody. Help me, she whispered again, but this time her voice was different, darker, more menacing. She started to crawl toward me, her fingers dragging through the blood on the floor, leaving streaks behind. I stumbled back, tripping over a chair, my heart racing as she kept coming closer, her eyes locked on mine. I tried to scream, but the sound caught in my throat. Suddenly, the door behind me slammed shut, and the lights flickered wildly. The air grew thick with the smell of decay, and I felt something cold wrap around my ankles, tugging at me, pulling me toward her. Stay with me, she hissed, her voice echoing in the room like a hundred voices speaking at once. I kicked and fought, desperate to get away, but the more I struggled, the tighter the grip around my legs became. My vision blurred, and the room started to spin. The last thing I saw before everything went black was her face, those empty, soulless eyes burning into mine. When I woke up, I was in the nurse's office. They told me they found me passed out in the hallway outside room 213. Mr. Hayward had never come back. In fact, no one had seen him since the lockdown began. The police searched the school, but they never found him. And as for room 213, it was sealed off the very next day. They said it was due to renovations, but we all knew better. No one talks about Emily anymore. No one dares to go near that room. But sometimes, late at night, when the hallways are empty, you can still hear it. The faint sound of scratching and a whisper that sends chills down your spine. Help me. Story number five. It was the kind of cold overnight that made you shiver, even indoors. Westfield High School was holding its annual evening parent-teacher conferences, and most of the students had already gone home, except for a few members of the student council who were helping with event setup. Grace, a senior, was part of the council and the last one to finish up. Her best friend, Rachel, had left earlier after complaining about a bad feeling she couldn't shake. Don't be weird, Grace had laughed, brushing off Rachel's fears. But now, as Grace finished stacking chairs in the gymnasium, she found herself thinking about what Rachel said. The school felt too quiet, almost unnatural. That's when the announcement crackled through the old PA system. Attention, this is a lockdown. This is not a drill. Please proceed to the nearest classroom and lock the doors. Grace froze. She glanced around the empty gymnasium, her heart suddenly pounding. Was there an intruder in the building? Why hadn't anyone, why hadn't anyone warned them? She had heard about lockdowns before, but there were usually sirens or security officers. This, this was different. The PA announcement had come without warning and the voice on the other end had sounded strange, almost distorted, like a recording playing at the wrong speed. She bolted for the nearest classroom, uh, her footsteps echoing down the hallway. The fluorescent lights above flickered and she swore she saw something. 
just a flash in the corner of her eye. A shadow? A figure? She didn't know, but the hairs on the back of her neck stood up as if someone were watching her. She reached the classroom door, flung it open, and slammed it behind her, locking it with trembling hands. The room was dark except for the faint glow of the emergency lights from the hallway. She tried to steady her breathing as she crouched down behind the teacher's desk, her back against the cold metal. Her phone buzzed in her pocket. It was a message from Rachel. Are you okay? What's going on? Grace didn't know what to reply. She didn't know if she was okay. She started typing back, but then she heard it, a soft shuffle of footsteps outside the door. Her fingers froze over the screen. She peeked around the edge of the desk, staring at the door. The footsteps stopped. The silence was deafening. Then, slowly, the door handle began to turn. Grace's heart nearly stopped. It jiggled once, twice, as if someone or something was trying to open it. Her breath hitched in her throat. The door was locked, wasn't it? She had locked it. But what if they had a key? The handle stopped moving. Grace waited, her pulse pounding in her ears, but nothing happened. After a few moments, she dared to let out a sigh of relief. Maybe it was just another teacher or one of the custodians checking the rooms. That's when the lights in the hallway flickered again and the emergency lights went out completely, plunging the entire school into darkness. She heard it then, whispers, faint, eerie whispers, so soft that she could barely make out the words. They seemed to come from everywhere at once, filling the room, seeping into her mind. Her eyes darted around, trying to pinpoint where they were coming from. The air felt thick, suffocating, like it was closing in on her. Suddenly, the door rattled violently as if someone were pounding on it with both fists. Grace let out a stifled gasp, backing away from the desk, her phone slipping from her hand and clattering to the floor. The pounding stopped as abruptly as it had started, and the whispers grew louder, more urgent. And then, complete silence. For a few agonizing minutes, Grace sat frozen, barely daring to breathe. She wanted to call for help, but her voice felt stuck in her throat. That's when she noticed something else. Movement. Just outside the narrow window in the door. Two eyes. They were watching her, glowing faintly in the dark like a reflection of light, except there was no light left in the hallway. The eyes didn't blink. They just stared, unblinking, through the glass, directly at her. Grace scrambled backward, her entire body trembling as the door handle began to turn again, more forcefully this time. But then, a different noise cut through the suffocating quiet, a metallic clang coming from further down the hallway. The eyes vanished from the window. She didn't wait to see what would happen next. With trembling legs, she forced herself to stand. She couldn't stay in the classroom. It wasn't safe. But if she went out there, whatever was lurking in the hallway might find her. Her mind raced, her hands shaking as she reached for her phone, pulling up Rachel's number, but the call wouldn't go through. No signal. A low, almost guttural sound drifted through the walls like breathing, but wrong, twisted, and it was getting closer. Grace's only option was to move. She unlocked the door as quietly as possible, barely breathing, and stepped into the hallway. The air was colder now, freezing her to the bone. The lights were still out, and the only sound was her own heartbeat thudding in her ears. She moved slowly, keeping to the shadows. If she could just make it to the main entrance, she might be able to escape. Then she saw it, a figure standing at the far end of the hallway, tall, too tall, with long limbs and a face that seemed to blend into the darkness. But the eyes, those glowing, inhuman eyes, were unmistakable. It hadn't seen her yet. She took a step back, her foot landing on a piece of loose tile that sent a loud crack echoing through the hallway. The figure snapped its head toward her, Grace didn't wait. She ran, sprinting down the hallway as fast as she could, the figure chasing after her, its footsteps unnaturally fast. The whispers returned, louder now, filling her mind with fragments of twisted voices. She reached the front entrance, yanking on the doors, but they wouldn't open. She was trapped. The whispers grew louder, the air freezing, and the figure was almost upon her. Desperate, Grace slammed her fists against the door, screaming for help. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the lights flickered back on and the doors swung open. Grace stumbled out into the night, gasping for breath. Behind her, the school was silent once more. She never saw the figure again. But sometimes late at night, she could still hear the whispers. Story number six. It started as an ordinary Wednesday afternoon at Lockwood High. 
The final bell had rung and most students were eager to head home. But then the PA system crackled to life with an announcement no one was expecting. This is a lockdown. I repeat, this is a lockdown. Please follow lockdown procedures. The students in Mr. Daniels' history class glanced at each other, confused. No drills had been scheduled, and the voice over the PA sounded shaky, almost panicked. Mr. Daniels furrowed his brow, but quickly moved to lock the door and close the blinds. All right, everyone, stay calm, he said, his voice steadier than his expression. It's probably just a precaution, but something felt off. The air in the room was heavy, thick with an uneasy tension that no one could quite place. Riley, sitting in the back row, exchanged a nervous look with her best friend, Mia. They'd been through lockdown drills before, but this felt different. There was an unsettling quietness that clung to the walls of the school. Minutes passed in tense silence. Then the lights flickered. A collective gasp spread across the room as the overhead lights buzzed, flickering on and off in a strange rhythm. Mr. Daniels frowned, walking toward the door to peek through the small window into the hallway. The moment he looked out, he froze. Riley strained to see what he was staring at, but from her seat, she could only catch a glimpse of the dimly lit hallway. Mr. Daniels? A student asked, her voice trembling. But he didn't respond. He slowly backed away from the door, his face pale. The entire class watched in silent terror as he stumbled backward toward his desk, eyes wide with fear. What is it? Mia whispered. I don't know, Riley muttered, her heart racing. Suddenly, there was a loud bang, like something heavy had slammed against the door. Mr. Daniels jumped, knocking over his chair in his haste to get back to the front of the room. His hands shook as he tried to keep his composure. It's, it's just a drill, he stammered, though his voice betrayed him. Another bang, this one louder, echoed down the hall. The sound was followed by a low, guttural growl that made the hairs on the back of Riley's neck stand on end. It didn't sound human. Did you hear that? Mia whispered, clutching Riley's arm. Before Riley could answer, the PA system crackled again, but the voice was different this time. It was faint, distant, and broken, like a whisper carried on the wind. Help. Us. The entire class sat in stunned silence. No one dared to speak. The voice came again clearer this time. It's coming. Mr. Daniels stared at the PA speaker, his face ashen. Everyone, get under your desks, he said softly, his voice barely a whisper. Riley's hands were shaking as she ducked under her desk, trying to stay as quiet as possible. Her heart pounded in her chest so loud she feared whatever was in the hallway could hear it. The banging continued, growing louder, more violent. It sounded like the door was going to break at any moment. And then, without warning, the door handle began to rattle. Something was trying to get in. The room plunged into darkness as the lights went out completely. Riley could hear the muffled gasps and quiet whimpers of her classmates, but her focus was on the door. The rattling stopped, and for a moment there was nothing but the eerie silence. Then the door slowly creaked open. In the dim emergency lighting, Riley saw the door swing wide, but no one entered. The hallway outside was shrouded in shadows, thick and oppressive. Mr. Daniels, standing frozen at the front of the room, didn't move, his eyes locked on the open doorway. Riley squinted, trying to see into the hallway. That's when she saw it, something standing just beyond the threshold. It was tall, unnaturally tall, and its limbs were twisted at odd angles. Its face was obscured in shadow, but its eyes glowed faintly, like burning embers in the darkness. Riley? Mia's voice trembled beside her. What is that? I don't know, Riley whispered, her voice barely audible. The creature stepped into the room. Its movements were slow, deliberate, as if it was savoring the fear it could feel emanating from the students. Riley pressed herself against the cold floor, hoping it wouldn't notice her, but it didn't seem to care about the desks or the students hiding beneath them. It was heading straight for Mr. Daniels. He stood rooted to the spot, too terrified to move as the creature approached. Riley could see his chest rising and falling rapidly, his breath coming in shallow gasps. The thing stopped just inches away from him, its glowing eyes fixed on his. For a long moment, the room was completely still. Then, without, without warning, the creature reached out one of its twisted hands and touched Mr. Daniels on the chest. He screamed, a blood-curdling, soul-shattering scream that echoed through the room. His body convulsed violently, thick, his limbs jerking in unnatural directions as if something was taking control of him. 
His eyes rolled back in his head, and he collapsed to the floor with a sickening thud. The creature turned slowly, its glowing eyes scanning the room. Riley's breath caught in her throat as it passed over her hiding spot. It seemed to linger for a moment, as though it could sense her fear, but then it moved on, disappearing into the shadows of the hallway once again. For several minutes, no one moved. The only sound was the faint hum of the PA system and the distant echoes of Mr. Daniel's scream, which still seemed to hang in the air like a bad dream. Then, the lights flickered back on, casting their pale, sterile glow over the room. The door was still open, swinging slightly as if caught in a gentle breeze. Mr. Daniels lay motionless on the floor, his eyes staring blankly at the ceiling. Riley crawled out from under her desk, her legs trembling beneath her. She helped Mia to her feet, both of them too stunned to speak. The PA system crackled one final time. The same eerie voice from before spoke again, this time with a chilling finality. Lockdown. Over. But Riley knew it wasn't over. Not really. Whatever had entered their school that day wasn't gone. It was just waiting, lurking in the shadows, ready to strike again. Story number seven. It all started with a lockdown drill. Just another routine practice, something we'd all been through countless times before. At least, that's what we thought. It was 2.15 p.m., a regular Thursday afternoon. I was in history class, bored out of my mind when the announcement came over the PA system. Attention students and staff, we are going into immediate lockdown. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. The room fell silent. Our teacher, Mrs. Reed, froze for a moment, then snapped into action, turning off the lights and motioning for us to move to the back corner of the room. We shuffled silently, exchanging nervous glances as we huddled together on the cold tile floor. The tension in the room was thick. Even though we'd practiced this a hundred times, there was something different about this one. It felt real. Minutes passed, or maybe it was hours. It was hard to tell. The only sound was the faint ticking of the clock on the wall and the occasional shuffle of someone trying to get more comfortable. I checked my phone, no signal, no texts, nothing. Everyone's phones were dead or had no service. That's when the first strange thing happened. We heard footsteps in the hallway, slow, deliberate footsteps that echoed through the otherwise silent school. They stopped just outside our door. We all held our breath, waiting for something, anything to happen. But there was just silence. Mrs. Reed glanced at us, her face pale, as if she wasn't sure whether to open the door or stay put. Then the handle jiggled softly at first, then more forcefully, like someone was testing the lock. The entire class tensed, fear rippling through us. My heart was racing, and I could feel the panic rising in the room. We waited, expecting to hear the door burst open, but instead, the handle stilled, and the footsteps moved on. For a while, no one moved or spoke. We were all too afraid. It was only after what felt like forever that Mrs. Reed whispered, It's okay. They've moved on. We're safe. But we weren't. Time dragged on. Every minute felt like an eternity. And then we heard it, another sound, faint at first but unmistakable. Crying. It was coming from the hallway, soft and muffled, like someone sobbing quietly. It grew louder, more desperate, as it echoed through the school. We all exchanged nervous looks. There wasn't supposed to be anyone in the hallway. Who would be crying like that during a lockdown? Mrs. Reed's face hardened. She motioned for us to stay put as she crept toward the door to peek through the small glass window. Her expression changed the moment she looked out. Fear, confusion, and something else I couldn't place. She backed away from the door quickly, her voice trembling as she whispered, stay away from the windows. But it was too late. A few of us had already looked. In the hallway, illuminated by the dim emergency lights, was a girl. She was standing in the middle of the corridor, her back to us, her long hair hanging down to her waist. She wore a torn school uniform, but the odd thing was, she wasn't one of us. No one recognized her. She didn't belong here. She was sobbing, her shoulders shaking with every sob, but she didn't move, just stood there, facing away from us, like she was waiting for something, or someone. One of the kids, Jake, whispered, what the hell is she doing? Before anyone could stop him, Jake crawled over to the door and tried to get a better look. The moment his face pressed against the glass, the girl stopped crying. The hallway went dead silent. Then, slowly, too slowly, she began to turn around. I could feel my stomach drop. I didn't want to see her face. None of us did. 
Something about the way she moved, the unnatural slowness, the dead quiet in the air, it all screamed that this wasn't right. As she turned, I caught a glimpse of her face through the window and in instantly wished I hadn't. Her eyes were hollow, empty sockets that seemed to suck in the light around them. Her skin was gray, decayed like she'd been dead for a long time. Her mouth twisted into a sick grin, stretching wider than any human mouth should. Jake stumbled back, falling onto the floor, his face pale as a sheet. He tried to speak, but no words came out. Just then, the girl took a step toward our door. That's when the pounding started. It came from all around us. On the walls, the ceiling, the floor, like a hundred fists were beating on the walls of the room. The girl outside moved closer, her grin growing wider, her hollow eyes locked on our door. Mrs. Reed was frantically whispering for us to stay calm, but no one was calm anymore. The pounding grew louder, more intense, as if something, many somethings, were trying to break through the walls and get in. And then, just as suddenly as it started, it stopped. The silence was worse, heavy, suffocating. The girl was gone, the hallway empty again. But the tension didn't lift. It felt like we were being watched, like eyes were on us from every shadow, every dark corner of the room. We waited in that silence for what felt like hours. Eventually, we heard the intercom crackle to life again. The same voice spoke, the lockdown is over, you may now exit the building. But we didn't move, something wasn't right. That voice, it sounded strange, distorted, and when I looked at my phone again, I noticed the time. 2.15 p.m., the exact same time the lockdown had started. It hadn't changed. We stayed in the room, too afraid to leave, too afraid to stay. The school was trapped in a loop, frozen in that moment. No one ever came for us. No announcement, no police. Just the same eerie voice repeating the same words over and over. The lockdown is over. You may now exit the building. But the truth is, we never left. Story number eight. Lincoln Middle School was old. One of those buildings that creaked and groaned with every gust of wind. The floors were uneven, the paint was peeling, and the hallways smelled faintly of mildew. But there was one part of the school that everyone avoided. Room 108. No one could remember when the room had been sealed off or why, but the students had plenty of theories. Some said it had been a storage room that caught fire years ago. Others claimed a teacher had died in there and her ghost still haunted the space. The truth was, no one knew for sure. The door was always locked, the windows covered with thick, dusty curtains. The only clue to its past was a small brass plaque beside the door that read, Room 108, do not enter. Jared didn't believe in ghost stories. He was a skeptic by nature, and he enjoyed making fun of his classmates who got spooked by the rumors. So when his friends dared him to sneak into room 108 during the upcoming lockdown drill, he accepted without hesitation. The day of the drill was cold and overcast, the kind of day that made, made the dim, flickering lights of Lincoln Middle seem even more dreary. Jared's teacher was going over the lockdown procedure as usual. Stay quiet, lock the doors, hide. Jared, however, was only half listening. He was too busy plotting his move. The announcement came over the loudspeakers. This is a lockdown drill. I repeat, this is a lockdown drill. As the teacher turned to lock the door, Jared quietly slipped out into the hallway. No one noticed him leave. His heart raced with excitement as he made his way toward the end of the corridor where room 108 waited, dark and forgotten. He reached the door and hesitated for the briefest moment but then grinned to himself. This will be easy, he thought. Pulling a paperclip from his pocket, Jared bent it into a makeshift lockpick. It wasn't the first time he'd picked a lock. He had a bit of a reputation for getting into places he shouldn't. After a few seconds of fiddling with the lock, there was a soft click. The door creaked open slowly, releasing a musty, stale odor into the hallway. Jared stepped inside, squinting into the darkness. The air felt unnaturally cold, and the only light came from the faint, pale glow seeping through the cracks in the curtains. Dust particles swirled around him, disturbed by the open door. The room was empty, or so it seemed at first glance. Desks were stacked haphazardly along one wall, and old filing cabinets stood against another. It didn't look like anything special. But as Jared ventured further inside, the door behind him slammed shut with a deafening bang. He whipped around, his heart skipping a beat. Great, he muttered, trying to calm his nerves. He reached for the doorknob, but it wouldn't budge. No matter how hard he pulled, 
the door remained sealed tight. He tried to pick the lock again, but his hands were shaking now, and the paperclip slipped from his grasp, clattering to the floor. Frustrated, Jared kicked the door, but then something else caught his attention. Movement. A shadow darted across the far corner of the room, too quick for him to get a clear look. His heart thumped in his chest as he scanned the room, straining to see in the dim light. Hello, he called out, his voice shaky, the bravado gone. No answer. He stepped forward cautiously, peering into the corners. That's when he noticed it, a row of old dusty lockers against the back wall. The strange part was that they weren't part of the original classroom design. They looked older, out of place. Something was off about them, but Jared couldn't figure out what. Then, from inside one of the lockers, he heard a faint tapping. Just three soft taps, like someone knocking on the inside of the metal door. Jared's breath caught in his throat. He took a step back, every instinct in his body telling him to get out, to run. But there was no way out. The door was locked, and the windows were sealed tight. The only way forward was to investigate. He reached out with trembling fingers, grasping the cold metal handle of the locker where the tapping had come from. Slowly, he pulled it open. It was empty, just a dusty old locker, nothing inside. He let out a shaky laugh, feeling a rush of relief. But the moment he turned away, the locker slammed shut on its own, the metallic clang echoing through the room. Jared jumped, spinning around in horror. All the lockers, every single one, began to rattle violently, as though something or someone was trying to break out. Panic surged through him as he backed away, his eyes darting to the sealed door. The room grew colder, and the rattling intensified louder and louder until it was nearly deafening. The shadows in the room seemed to stretch and writhe, twisting into unnatural shapes on the walls. And then, suddenly, everything went silent. Jared stood frozen, his heart pounding in his ears. The lockers stopped moving, the room eerily still. He didn't dare move, afraid that whatever had been in the room with him wasn't finished. Then, from behind him, he heard a whisper. Faint, but unmistakable. Get out. Jared's blood ran cold. He turned slowly, his breath catching in his throat. In the center of the room stood a figure, a woman, her face pale and drawn, her eyes hollow and lifeless. She was dressed in old-fashioned clothes, her long, dark hair hanging limply around her shoulders, her eyes locked onto his, and she whispered again, Get out. Jared didn't need to be told twice. He bolted toward the door, slamming his shoulder into it. This time, it flew open, and he stumbled out into the hallway, gasping for breath. The school was quiet, the lockdown drill still in progress, but everything felt different. He could still hear the echo of that whisper in his head, and as he looked back toward room 108, he saw the door slowly swinging shut on its own. Jared never mentioned what happened in room 108 to anyone. The dare had been foolish, but he knew that whatever was in that room wasn't just a rumor, and he wasn't going to stick around to find out what else it wanted. Story number nine. The school day had begun like any other. The hum of morning chatter, the squeak of sneakers against tile floors, and the rustle of paper as students settled into their seats. But by noon, something strange was brewing. An unsettling silence fell over the halls of Jefferson High School. Riley and her classmates were in math class when the announcement came over the PA system. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Teachers, secure your classrooms immediately. Students, remain quiet. The voice on the speaker wasn't their usual principal, it was someone else. Their voice low and almost hesitant, like they weren't sure of what they were saying. Mrs. Rodriguez, their teacher, froze for a second before rushing to lock the door and turn off the lights. The blinds were drawn, leaving only faint slivers of light sneaking through the cracks. Everyone, get under your desks, Mrs. Rodriguez instructed, trying to keep her voice steady. Riley's heart pounded as she slid under her desk. Across from her, her best friend Mason gave her a worried glance. Something felt off. This lockdown wasn't like the drills they'd had before. There was an eerie stillness in the air, like the calm before a storm. Minutes passed, but it felt like hours. The only sounds were the shallow breaths of her classmates and the occasional creak of the old building. Then, faintly, Riley heard it. Footsteps, heavy, deliberate, and far too slow for comfort. They echoed down the hallway outside, growing louder with every step. Mrs. Rodriguez stood motionless, her eyes fixed on the door as the footsteps stopped directly outside their room. Bang! Something hit the door. Bang! This time, it was harder, as though whatever was on the other side wanted in. 
Mrs. Rodriguez covered her mouth to stifle a gasp, backing away slowly. The class collectively held their breath. Bang! 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 The door rattled violently in its frame, but it stayed locked. Riley could feel her pulse in her throat. She looked over at Mason, who mouthed, What the hell? Suddenly, the banging stopped, replaced by something far worse, a low, guttural growl. It wasn't human, Riley realized. Whatever was out there wasn't human. She could hear it breathing through the gap under the door, its rasping breath sending chills down her spine. Then, in the silence, something slid under the door. It was dark, like a shadow, but it moved like liquid. Riley's eyes widened as the dark mass spread across the floor, slithering toward the desks, like it was alive. Mrs. Rodriguez's voice quivered, Stay still. But Riley couldn't. She felt an overwhelming sense of dread as the shadow crept closer, tendrils of darkness stretching toward her. It was cold, unnaturally cold. The temperature in the room plummeted as the shadow wrapped around the legs of the desks, swirling and pulsing. Without thinking, Riley grabbed Mason's arm. His eyes widened in panic, but he didn't move. The shadow moved under Riley's desk, curling around her shoes. For a moment, she thought she felt it pulling, like it was trying to drag her down into some unseen abyss. She stifled a scream and pulled her feet up onto the seat, her heart racing so fast she thought it might explode. Suddenly, the shadow recoiled, slithering back toward the door as if something had called it away. Just as quickly as it had appeared, it slipped back under the door, vanishing into the hallway. The cold air lingered, though, leaving an oppressive weight hanging over the room. For what felt like an eternity, the room was silent. Then the footsteps returned, but this time they were faster, running. And they weren't alone. Voices. Faint, whispering voices filled the air. They were soft at first, but grew louder, overlapping in a chaotic murmur. It was impossible to understand what they were saying, but their tone was one of desperation. The voices circled the classroom, disembodied and haunting. Please, help, let me in. The whispers came from everywhere, surrounding the students like an invisible force. The walls creaked as though the building itself was alive, reacting to the voices. Mrs. Rodriguez was frozen in place, her eyes wide with terror, unable to provide any comfort or guidance. Riley clutched Mason's hand tighter. Her skin prickled with fear, and she felt the room spinning. This wasn't real. It couldn't be real. Then, the classroom phone rang, cutting through the eerie whispers. Everyone jumped. Mrs. Rodriguez hesitated, then slowly picked up the receiver, her hands trembling. Hello, she whispered, her face drained of color. She slowly lowered the phone without saying another word. What is it? Mason whispered, his voice barely audible. Mrs. Slag, Rodriguez's eyes darted to the door. The principal, he said, no one's in the building. The staff left hours ago. This is impossible. The room fell into shocked silence. Hours? But they'd only just heard the lockdown announcement. The whispers intensified, growing louder and more frantic, like whatever was out there was getting closer. The temperature dropped further, and Riley could see her breath in the air now. Suddenly, the door to the classroom began to shake violently, as if something was pounding against it from the other side. The lights flickered, and the whispers turned to wails, loud and deafening. Riley felt like she was about to pass out from fear. She squeezed her eyes shut, hoping this nightmare would end. And then, as quickly as it had begun, the noise stopped. Silence. Complete and utter silence. She opened her eyes. The classroom was still. The lights had stopped flickering, and the temperature was slowly returning to normal. Mrs. Rodriguez stood frozen near the door her hand gripping the desk so hard her knuckles were white. The PA system crackled to life again. Locked down over. You are now free to leave the building. The voice was calm and normal, as though nothing had happened. Mrs. Rodriguez hesitated before slowly unlocking the door and peeking outside. The hallway was empty. Without a word, the students hurried out of the room, desperate to leave the nightmare behind. As Riley and Mason reached the exit, she glanced back down the hall one last time, and that's when she saw it. A figure, standing in the shadows at the far end of the corridor. Watching them. As they bolted out of the building, the whispers followed them, lingering in the cold autumn air. Story number 10. The school gym always had a weird vibe at night. You know how a place feels completely different once the lights go out? During the day, the gym was loud, filled with the sounds of bouncing basketballs, squeaking sneakers, and chatter. But... 
After dark, when it was empty, it felt wrong. That's where it happened. It was the night of the big game, and I had stayed late to help clean up. I was part of the school's AV crew, responsible for setting up the sound system and scoreboard. Everyone else had left, and the only sound was the echo of my footsteps bouncing off the high ceiling. The bleachers were empty, and the dim emergency lights cast long, eerie shadows across the floor. I was just about done packing up the equipment when the announcement came over the loudspeaker. Attention! The school is going into lockdown. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. My blood ran cold. A lockdown? At this time of night, there was no one left in the school except me, and maybe a janitor or two. My first instinct was to grab my phone, but there was no service, no messages, no internet, nothing. Just me, standing alone in the middle of a dark gym, with no clue what was happening. I started toward the exit, thinking I could just leave, but then I remembered the lockdown rules. Stay where you are, lock the doors, wait for further instructions, but something about the situation felt off. Why would the school go into lockdown so late when everyone was supposed to be gone? I hesitated at the gym door, staring at the long, empty hallway beyond. The lights flickered, casting strange shadows on the walls. It felt like something was watching me, just out of sight. My gut told me to stay put, so I locked the gym doors and went back to the center of the floor, where the faint emergency lights barely reached. I sat on the bleachers, trying to stay calm. Time passed slowly. Minutes felt like hours. I kept glancing at the doors, expecting someone to burst in and tell me what was going on, but, but there was only silence. And then I heard it. A whisper. At first, I thought I imagined it. The gym was huge and sounds echoed strangely in the empty space. But then I heard it again, faint, almost like someone was calling my name. I stood up, straining my ears, trying to pinpoint where the sound was coming from. The whisper grew louder, like it was moving through the air, circling me. It wasn't a voice I recognized, and the more I listened, the more unnatural it sounded, like a chorus of voices layered on top of each other, all speaking in hushed tones. Come closer, it seemed to say. We've been waiting. My heart pounded in my chest. I scanned the gym, but it was empty. The whispering continued, growing louder and more insistent until it felt like the voices were right next to me, breathing down my neck. I ran to the doors, yanking on them, but they were locked. No matter how hard I pulled, they wouldn't budge. Panic set in. I was trapped. Suddenly, the lights in the gym flickered wildly, and I heard the sound of footsteps, slow, deliberate footsteps echoing across the gym floor. But I couldn't see anyone. I backed away, my heart racing as the footsteps grew louder, like someone or something was walking toward me even though the room was empty. I turned, scanning the bleachers, the corners, the dark shadows that seemed to stretch and twist unnaturally, and then I saw it. In the far corner of the gym, just beyond the reach of the emergency lights, there was a figure. At first, it was just a shadow, barely visible in the darkness. But as I stared, it began to move, slowly, unnaturally, like it was gliding across the floor. It wasn't human. Uh, the figure was tall, too tall, its limbs long and thin, almost skeletal. Its face was shrouded in darkness, but I could feel its eyes on me, watching me, like it had been waiting for this moment. The whispers grew louder, more frantic now, overlapping in a cacophony of voices. They weren't coming from the figure, but from everywhere, all around me. The air grew thick, and it felt like the walls of the gym were closing in, like the space itself was warping, twisting into something it shouldn't be. The figure moved closer, its long limbs jerking unnaturally as it approached. My breath hitched, and I stumbled back, my mind screaming at me to run, but there was nowhere to go. Suddenly, the figure stopped. It stood there, motionless, at the edge of the light, as if it was waiting for something. The whispers fell silent, the air heavy with anticipation, and then in a voice that was barely a whisper, it spoke. You shouldn't be here. My blood ran cold. I turned to the door, frantically trying to unlock it, my hands trembling. The figure didn't move, but I could feel its presence growing stronger, like it was feeding off my fear. Finally, the door clicked open. I didn't look back. I bolted down the hallway, my footsteps echoing behind me, as the whispers started up again, chasing me, telling me to come back. The hallways were deserted, dark and unfamiliar. It felt like the school had become a maze, twisting and turning in ways it never had before. 
I ran for what felt like hours, but no matter how far I went, the whispers followed. Eventually, I found an exit. I burst through the doors into the cool night air, gasping for breath. The school loomed behind me, dark and silent, as if nothing had ever happened. I never told anyone about that night. Who would believe me? I tried to rationalize it, to tell myself it was just a prank, or maybe my mind playing tricks on me. But deep down, I knew the truth. The gym wasn't empty that night, and whatever was in there, it wasn't human. I still hear the whispers sometimes, late at night, when the wind blows just right. They're faint, almost too quiet to notice, but they're there, calling out to me, reminding me of what I saw. And sometimes, when I walk by the school after dark, I swear I see a shadow in the gym, standing there, waiting. <laughs>